Hello, Mark. I'm Ann. I'm in your junior speaking class, and my student number is S O two four one O two one. Now I'm going to read the article. Ted Fellows Retreat 2005, filmed August 2005, 3 17 p.m. Christine Sung Kim, the enchanting music of sign language. Interpreter, piano. P is my favorite musical symbol. It seems to play softly. If you are playing a musical instrument and you notice a P in a score, you need to play softer. Two P's even softer. Four P's extremely soft. This is my drawing of a P tree, which demonstrates no matter how many thousands upon thousands of P's there may be, you will never reach complete silence. This is my current definition of silence, a very obscure sound. I like to share a little bit about the history of American Sign Language (ASL), plus a little bit of my of my own background. French Sign Language was brought to America during the early 1800s, and as time went by, mixed with local signs. It evolved into a language you know today as ASL. So it has a history of about two hundred years. I was born deaf, and I was taught to believe that sound wasn't a part of my life, and I believe it to be true. Yet I realize now that that wasn't the case at all. Sound was very much a part of my life, really. On my mind every day, as a deaf person living in a world of sound, it's as if I was living in a foreign country, blindly follow its rules, customs, behaviors, and norms without ever questioning them. So how is that? So how is it that I understand sound? Well, I watched how. People behave and respond to sound. You people are like my loudspeakers and amplify sound. I learn and mirror that behavior. At the same time, I've learned that I create sound, and I've seen how people respond to me. Thus, I've learned. For example, don't slam the door. Don't make too much noise when you are eating from the potato chip bag. Laughter. Don't burp, and when you are eating, make sure you don't scrap your utensils on the plate. All all of these things I I term sound adequate. Adequate. Maybe I think about sound etiquette more than the average her hearing person does. I'm hyper vigilant around sound. And I'm always waiting in eager, nervous anticipation around sound, about what so come next. Hence, this drawing, TBD, to be decided, TBC to be continued, TBA to be announced. And you notice the staff, there are no notes contained in the lines. That's because the lines already contain sound through the subtle smudge and smears. In deaf culture, movement is equivalent to, to sound. This is a sign for a staff in ASL. A typical staff contains fine lines. Yet for me, singing it with my thumb sticking up like that doesn't feel natural. That's why you notice in my drawings, I stick to four lines on paper. In the year two thousand eight, I had the opportunity to travel to Berlin, Germany, for an artist residency there. Prior to this time, I had been working as a painter. During the summer, I visit different museum and gallery spaces, and as I went from one place to the next. I noticed there was no visual art there. At that time, sound was tending, and this struck me. There was no visual art; everything was adulter, audio, 
auditory. Auditory. Now, sound has come into my art territory. Is it going to further distance from distance me from art? I realize that doesn't have to be the case at all. I actually know sound. I know it so well that it doesn't have to be something just experienced through the years. It could be felt tactually, or experienced as a visual, or even as an idea. So I decided to reclaim ownership of sound and put it into my art practice. And everything that I had been taught regarding sound, I decided to do away with a unlearn to do with to do away with an unlearn. I started creating a new body of work, and when I presented this to the art community, I was blown away with the amount of support and attention I received. I realized, sound is like money, power, control, social currency. In the back of my mind, I've always felt that sound was your thing, a hearing person's thing. And sound is so powerful that it could either disempower me and my artwork, or it could empower me. I chose to be empowered. There is a massive culture around spoken language, and just because I don't use my literal voice to communicate, in society's eyes, it's as if I don't have a voice at all. So I need to work with individuals who can support me as an equal and become my voice, and that way I'm able to maintain relevancy in society today. So at school, at work, and institute institutions, I work with my with many different ASL interpreters, and their voice becomes my voice and identity. They help me to be heard. And their voice hold value and currency. Ironically, by borrowing out their voices, I'm able to maintain a temporary form of currency, kind of like taking out a loan with a very high interest rate. If I didn't continue this practice, I feel that I could just fade off into oblivion. And not maintain any form of the social currency. So, with sounds as my new art medium, I del delved into the world of music, and I was surprised to see the similarities between music and ASL. For example, a musical note cannot be fully captured and expressed on paper, and the same holds true for a concept in ASL. They are both highly spatial and highly inflected, meaning that subtle changes can affect the entire meaning of both signs and sounds. I'd like to share with you a piano metaphor, metaphor, to have you have a better understanding of how ASL works. So envision a piano. ASL is broken down into many different grammatical parameters. If you assign a different parameter to each finger, finger as you play the piano, just as facial expre expression, body movement, speed, hand shape, and so on, as you play the piano. English is a is a linear language, as it one key is being pressed at a time. However, ASL is more like a chord. All ten fingers need to calm down simultaneously to express a clear concept or idea in ASL. If just one of these keys were to change the chord, it would create a completely different meaning. The same applies to music as regards to pitch, tone, and volume. In ASL. By playing around with these different grammatical parameters, you can express different ideas. For example, take the sign. To look at, this is the sign. To look at, 
I'm looking at you, staring at you. Laughter, laughter. Oh, busted. Laughter. Uh oh, what are you looking at? Oh, stop. Laughter. I then started thinking, what if I was to look at ASL through a musical line lens? If I was to create a sign and repeat it over and over, it could become like a piece of vi- visual music. For example, this is the sign for day, as the sun rises and sets. This is all day. If I was to repeat it and slow it down, visually it looks like a piece of music. All day, I feel the same holds true for all night. All night, this is all night, represented in this drawing, and this led me to to thinking about three different kinds of nights: last night, overnight, since, all night long. Laughter. I feel like the third one was a lot more musicality than the other two. Laughter. This represents how times. How time is expressed in ASL, and how the distance from your body can express the changes in time. For example, one edge is one hand, two edge is two hand. Present tense happens close, closet, and in front of the body. Future is in front of the body, and the past is to your back. So the first example is a long time ago, then past, used to, and the last one, which is my favorite, with the every romantic and dramatic notion to it. Once upon a time. Laughter. Common time is a musical term with a specific time signature of four beats per measure, but. When I see the word "common time," what automatically comes to mind for me is at the same time. So notice R H, right hand, left edge, left hand, and you have the staff across the head and the chest. Head. R H, flesh claw, common time, chest, L H, flesh claw. I'm now going to demonstrate a hand shape called the flash claw. Flash claw. Can you please follow along with me? Everybody, hands up. Now we are going to do it in both the head and the chest, kind of like common time, or at the same time. Yes, got it. That means to fall in love, in international sign. Laughter. International sign, as a note, is a visual tool to help communicate across cultures and sign languages around the world. The second one I like to demonstrate is this. Please follow along with me again. And now this. This is colonization. In ASL, laughter. Now the third. Please follow again. Please follow along again and again. This is enlightenment in A- in ASL. So let's do all three together: fall in love, colonization, and enlightenment. Good job, everyone! Laughter. Notice how all three signs are very similar. They all happen at the hand, at the head, and the chest, and they convey quite different meanings. So it's amazing to see how ASL is alive and thriving, just like music. However, in this day and age, we live in a very audio-centric world, and just because ASL has no sound to it, it automatically holds no social currency. We need to start thinking harder about what defines social currency and allow ASL to develop its own form. Of currency, without sound, and this could possibly be a step to lead to a more 
inclusive society. And maybe people will understand that you don't need to be deaf to learn ASL, nor do you have to be hearing to learn music. ASL is such a rich treasure that I like you to have the same experience, and I like to invite you to open your ears, to open your eyes, to take part in our culture and experience our visual language, and you never know, you might just fall in love with us. Applause. Thank you. Dennis, Calder, Bratton. Hey, that's me. Applause. Thank you for listening. Bye bye, Mark.